Hello, you're welcome in this series of videos. And previously, we have looked at the information. Now we want to see how it is applied in the medical field. And this is at mhumzanaftari.com here in Uganda. And we always encourage you to subscribe and share these videos so that they can be of help across the world. So today we want to talk about, talk about jaundice, whereby this jaundice is like a sign, or you can call it ictilus. You can call it jaundice or ictilus. And jaundice is a symptom of hyperbilirubinemia, whereby jaundice is just yellowing. It is yellowing of scalar membranes. Scalar, or you can call them mucous membranes. So whenever someone comes, is having yellow eyes, yellow lips, and maybe even the urine is so yellow, and even the skin sometimes, that is what we call jaundice. And it is always characterized, this yellowing of the membrane is characterized by hyperbilirubinemia. Bili, hyperbilirubinemia, whereby hyperbilirubinemia is increased levels of bilirubin in blood. When we have increased levels of bilirubin, and this bilirubin can be indirect, or it can be direct bilirubin. So if part of them or one of them is elevated, that is what we call hyperbilirubinemia, and it is the one that leads to yellowing. When it becomes excessive, even all the mucous membranes begin to become yellow in color. And that is what we call jaundice. And this jaundice, or ictilus, is categorized into three. We see types of jaundice, types of jaundice, and we have prehepatic jaundice, we have hepatic And we have post-hepatic. We have prehepatic. We have hepatic and post-hepatic jaundice. So these are the three types of jaundice. So I want to begin with prehepatic. Prehepatic jaundice. Or you can call prehepatic Ictilus as its name suggests that prehepatic means before the liver hepatocytes. So here the problem is not the liver, but we see excessive breakdown of red cells. So any condition that causes excessive here we see any condition that case causes Excessive breakdown, excessive breakdown of red cells. Because these red cells are supposed to be destroyed when they reach their senile or their old age, which is always 120 days. Which is 120 days. But in the prehepatic jaundice, we see these red cells being destroyed before. They reach their 120 days. And because there is excessive breakdown of these red cells, we see the type of bilirubin elevated being indirect. Indirect bilirubin, or you can call it unconjugated. And why is it indirect hyperbilirubinemia? Is that the retinal endothelial cell, they are blocking more indirect bilirubin than what UDP gluconocytotransferase can conjugate in the liver hepatocytes. So we see the type of hyperbilirubinemia in prehepatic, or what you can call hemolytic jaundice. You can call it hemolytic jaundice, 
is due, that's why even we call it hemolysis, hemolytic, because there is excessive hemolysis of red cells. So the type is indirect. Why? Because you are forming more indirect bilirubin than what UDP can conjugate, leading to what we call indirect hyperbilirubinin. And the causes are many. Causes include hemolytic anemias like sickle cell, like sickle cell anemia. We see infections, infections like malaria can lead to this type of jaundice, malaria and typhoid. We see hemolytic disease of the newborn causing this type of bilirubin, hyperbilirubinemia. We see blood incompatibility reactions. Blood incompatibility reactions. When you give a patient with incompatible blood, then we saw also sometimes snake venoms. Snake venoms can lead to increased hemolysis of red cells. So these are some of the causes of prehepatic or what we call hemolytic jaundice. Whereby hemolytic jaundice is due to excessive breakdown of red cells before they reach old stage. And the type of bilirubin which is elevated is indirect bilirubin. Then the causes can be like any hemolytic anemia, any anemia due to excessive breakage of red cells. Then infections, hemolytic disease of the newborn, blood transfusion reactions, and snake venom, plus other toxins that can induce hemolysis of red cells. That is what we call prehepatic jaundice. Another type of jaundice we are going to talk about is hepatic. Hepatic jaundice and hepatic jaundice, or you can call it intrahepatic. Hepatic jaundice or ictelus. For it is formed, so as the name suggests that the problem is the liver hepatocytes. Here it is either damage, can be due to damage of liver hepatocytes, damage of liver cells. liver cells, or it can be due to blockage of the, of the cells, if they are blo blockage of bilocanalitula, which is the part which excretes this direct bilirubin, which is conjugated. So whenever there is damage to the cells, we see in this type of bilirubin, the type of bilirubin that is elevated can either be indirect or direct depending on the cause. If the cause is the liver cell damage, meaning there is no UDP, we see indirect. But if the cell is just blockage of the bilocanalitidae, we see direct bilirubin being elevated. And the causes of indirect hyperbilirubinemia, we have liver hepatitis, Hepatitis, that is inflammation of the liver cells, and this hepatitis can be due to viral, can be due to toxins, or it can be due to drugs, or it can be autoimmune. We see it in liver cellulosis, liver cellulosis, which is a scarring or scar formation of the liver cells seen in alcoholic chronic alcoholic hepatitis. So anything that causes liver damage leads to hepatic jaundice. And this, the type of bilirubin which is elevated is in the, in the elect bilirubin. Then if it is due to blockage of the bilocanalitula, which is the pathway for bilirubin, for direct bilirubin, we see causes like these inherited disorders like Dubin Johnson syndrome, Dubin Johnson syndrome. We see rotor syndrome.
can do bin Johnson syndrome. Here yeah, the, the river cells are okay, but the problem is the uh, drainage part. We conjugate the bilirubin in liver cells, but we cannot excrete them via the bile and naturally due to the blockage. And it, so this one, when it happens, the type of hyperbilirubinemia is direct hyperbilirubinemia or conjugated hyperbilirubinemia. And these are the causes. And sometimes Wilson's disease can also do this. Due to Wilson's disease is due to accumulation of copper. Those who work in the copper mines, when this copper accumulates, it can lead to in the direct bilirubin being, being high, and we normally assess it using ceruloprasin. What is Dobin Johnson syndrome? Dobin Johnson and Rother syndrome, they are due to the blockage of the excretory part or the drainage part, whereby the hepatocyte epithelia are closed and we can no longer move direct bilirubin into the garu blood. That is the Dubin Johnson and it is inherited. Dubin Johnson and Rotter syndrome. And these are the causes of hepatic joints. So what I have seen under hepatic joints is that it is due to either liver damage or blockage of the drainage system. And the type of bilirubin can be either indirect if it is due to hepatocellular damage, diseases that causes hepatocellular damage, the type of bilirubin can be indirect hyperbilirubin. And if it is due to direct hyperbilirubinemia, we see inherited disorders like Dobin Johnson, Rotter syndrome, together with Wilson's, Wilson's disease, causing that type of joints. Lastly, we talk about post-hepatic joints. This was number two. Number three is post-hepatic. Post-hepatic joints or ictelus, and this post-hepatic jaundice, for it, the cause is not the liver cells, but the drainage system. As we saw the liver when it was drawn here, so the liver having been divided into two, then we saw this hepatic joining, the gar bladder, then the via cystic duct, then this is the common bile duct joining into the duodenum. And here there was the pancreas in the duodenum. So we are seeing in the post hepatic, the liver cells are not a problem, but the problem is any destruction of the biliary system. Anything that affects this biliary system is what causes post-hepatic, either blockage or reduced diameter of the biliary system. So we are saying in the post-hepatic, or you can call it obstructive jaundice, obstructive is due to blockage. Any condition that blocks due to blockage of biliary system. And the biliary system includes the hepatic duct, the gallbladder, the bile duct, together with the pancreas. So anything that blocks the biliary system leads to this. And these conditions that block, you can see conditions like complete blockage, blockage like cholestasis, cholestasis, cholangitis, primary sclerosing cholangitis, cancer of the gallbladder. Then even we have gallstones. Then cholangiocarcinoma. You can also see them like there is cholecystitis. There is cholangiocarcinoma, that is the cancer of the biliary system. You can also see pancreatitis. Because we see the pancreas joins the bile duct at the ampulla of vata, so any inflammation of the pancreas can also block at this point, and we cannot excrete bilirubin. 
So condition like pancreatitis, cancer of the pancreas, and gallstones, cholestasis, and cholangitis, that is the inflammation of the bile duct, can lead to this blockage of the BR system, which can lead to post-hepatic jaundice. And the type of bilirubin that is elevated is direct. We see direct hyperbilirubinemia. Hyperbilirubinemia. And we have seen the causes being hepatobiliary disorders or hepatobiliary diseases. Those are the causes of post-hepatic jaundice. So this is how far we have reached. Thank you so much for always being there for us. And lastly, we shall see that in a prehepatic jaundice, in a prehepatic jaundice, we see all liver enzymes are normal. All liver enzymes are normal. That is ALT, AST, GGT, and ALT. But in hepatic jaundice, they can either be high or if the cause is indirect, we find liver enzymes like ART, AST being elevated. But if the cause is this Dumi Johnson and Rota syndrome, we see GGT and ARP moderately elevated. This is very elevated, then this is moderately elevated. And we see if it is post-hepatic due to the blockage of the biliary system, as we have seen it, you find enzymes like GGT, gamma glutamate transferase, and ARP being high due to, because these enzymes are found in the epithelial lining of the biliary system, and any blockage of the biliary system causes elevated GGT and ARP, plus five prime nucleotides. 5' prime nucleotidase enzyme, GGT and ARP, they are elevated in post-hepatic jaundice. Thank you so much for listening. Medical Sciences by Naftali Muhumza. We are always at your service.